for today's video, you're going to need orange peel that I've just diced up. I have about one cup of orange peel in there and about two cups of water. You're just going to pour that in there. You're going to take regular white vinegar that usually you have in your cupboard and you're going to add two tablespoons of white vinegar to this. Once you've added your vinegar, you're just going to give it a little stir. I usually just kind of shake the pot or stir it with a tablespoon that I have the vinegar that I stirred, poured the vinegar in. And then you're just going to turn the heat on medium, bring it to just a simmer. Don't forget to add the tablespoon of regular salt. I actually use coarse salt because that's typically what I have in my house. Turn the pot to medium to low so you can bring it just to a simmer. And then you're going to just, it's going to take an hour and a half to two hours to do the initial pull, extract the ink out. And then I will usually let it set overnight. So I will be back with you when it is time to check on it. Alrighty, so the ink has been cooking and that's really hot. So you see me kind of touching it, use a pot holder like I didn't have one in my hand. The interesting thing about the orange ink as opposed to like the avocado ink I've done in a previous video is this ink, it almost becomes like a honey consistency just on its own, um, which is really interesting to me. And when you paint on it, it is a little thicker even without the gum Arabic. And so when I did my test strips, I wasn't really happy with it. You can see I got virtually no color at like the 30 minute mark. And it is a very light ink anyways. And so I put the lid back on it and I let it simmer just a little bit longer. All right, so the ink simmered probably about two hours. And then I also let it sit overnight so it was cooler when I poured it in. Um, and my pot, luckily it has a little straining thing so I don't have to like use the strainer. And like I said, this ink was really, really light. And so I knew that, and I didn't get that much out of it, um, like ink wise, uh, water wise, I mean water wise. And so I didn't plan on bottling it to use as regular ink. I will add gum Arabic to it and then we'll be ready for the next step once I've gotten all the ink out. So to one ounce, just a reminder, to one ounce of ink, you're going to add 10 drops of gum Arabic and one clove and that way it will not mold on you. For today, we are going to be working with um, turmeric that I just used from an exhaust dye bath that, did, that still had a lot of turmeric left in it. I strained it through a paper towel and I am going into a bottle I could use the ink. Um, and I have a clove for um, to hold it, but this is not really like ink. This is more like just watercolor. I just want it as a base layer on my paper. I have some blue ink. I actually really love the blue color from the Waterman ink. I have Himalayan salt and I have a big water brush thing of water and 140 pound watercolor paper. You will get less buckling if you tape the surface down. Um, I am not taping it down. I'm just going to press it when it's dry. And so what we're going to do is, okay. So let's get started. I put everything off to the side, sort of within my reach. I have a thing of water and I have a really big brush and I just use like whatever cheap brush, but make sure you always use it for water. I'm going to put a sort of a layer of water down. Um, kind of going to get it all over there. I have quite a bit of water on the paper. And then I'm going to put some ink in it. I'm going to paint it with watercolor with my turmeric. So I am actually going to use a separate brush for that because I do not want to get 
that, like, what if I don't want to use turmeric next time? What if it dies in my brush? So I'm just going to pour this on here. And because there's a lot of water on here, you may have to get a little bit off. Let's get just a little bit of the water off out of the bowl. So really you're just tinting the paper for what I'm going to do next. And we're going to let this layer dry and then we're going to come back to it. All right, so it's dry a little bit. Let's get back to it. You want your paper to be damp for this next step. We're going to put the blue in there. I'm not going to be like really sure I cover all the spaces. I kind of would like to see some of the, the yellow shine through. And I would also kind of like to have like some darker spots and some lighter spots. So we're just not going to worry about that. And I kind of like that. I kind of like that what it did. And then we're just going to put the sea salt down. And what this does is it attracts the water. So you don't want to clump it all together got to be wet enough for it to work. So it's going to attract the water and then over time it's going to pull the, you kind of see it working over here where it's really really wet. You can do this with regular salt. You don't get, you're not going to get as big of a, like a shape. It won't draw as much of the water up. So we'll do some little ones kind of close together. And what I love about doing this sort of work is it's experimental. Like, you know, one little thing could be different. One, you know, one, one small thing could be a little different. Like the humidity in the air as I'm sitting outside could make it different or, you know, any number of things could make it different. So we're going to add a little bit of water because it's really dry right there and I want it to wet up. You know, you can kind of see what it's going to do right there. It's going to make, it's going to draw the water in, into the salt. And you can see the salt is turning blue in sections already. So this has to come completely dry. So it has to sit over on the drying rack for a little while. And then we're going to add some more sea salt to it. In those little areas that I just re-wet. And I even find that as I'm doing this, I actually am like creating a pattern. I was really trying not to do that, but um, I actually think that you have sort of a style all your own. And that you'll do that. You'll create your own patterns. I work sort of organically anyways. So the bigger ones are going to are going to pull up bigger ones, little bigger sections and the littler ones are going to make smaller little starburst. And we will just wait for this to dry and then see what we get. All right, so our paper has dried. In the previous section of the video, I had done some blue ink with some Himalayan salt, which gave me these lovely patterns. And then I painted over in sections of it with the orange ink that we dyed or that we created. 
um, on the stove top. The orange ink is like super sort of light yellow. It does take a couple of coats and you know, it will pick up the properties of other colors. I had worked on this before and I wasn't liking where it was going. So all I did was take some um, acrylic ink and sort of covered over in sections. And you can kind of see down here towards the bottom that I actually mix some of the orange ink in with it and it picks up and it make, does make it a lighter orange rather than this is kind of yellow. So what I'm gonna to use to finish this project out is I'm gonna keep that ink, the acrylic ink up to where I can reach it. I have avocado ink, which I had made from a previous video, which you can find on our YouTube channel. Um, the blue that I used to create the background of this, which is this Waterman, um, it's called Inspired Blue Ink. It's kind of a really gorgeous ink. You can make your own blue ink. Um, I have not done that yet. Um, we might do it in a later video. Um, I have a um, fountain pen with the Waterman Blue ink in it. I have a black Pigma. I have a selection of white jelly roll pens, which you know if you've watched some previous videos, I really like to use these in my work. And I have a glass dip pen. Um, this has probably become my favorite drawing tool. I picked it up over on Amazon and it is really a nice tool to draw with. So let's get started. The way that I typically start this is I use my avocado ink because I like the lightness of the color of it. And so you just put your pen in there. And like I've shown you in previous videos, you have to be kind of careful uh, excuse my dog working. She sees something. And so I'm just going to fill in sort of abstract shapes. Um, I like this pen. I like this avocado ink because it gives me sort of a light texture in the background. And then I can decide where I want to go darker or where I want to go lighter. So I am going to do this and then I'm going to speed up the video so you don't have to watch like 40 minutes of me drawing. So I've been working on this one for a little while and you notice that my paper got a whole lot smaller. In my personal work, I tend to do this a lot. 
And if we were in a garden, what would be happening is the kids would be just playing on their paper. Like, um, what would happen if I do the ink like this? And what would happen if the ink did that? And why is, you know, if I put more color on? And so what we end up with at the garden is usually just like a whole pages of like just experimentation, um, which is really what I wanted from this. Um, I don't intend for the projects to be finished projects. I will finish them. Um, and so you saw the page got a whole lot smaller um, because when I was working, I noticed that I was really only working in this bottom corner. And all of them, once they've been separated, really sort of have sort of nice elements to them. And a lot of times in my work, I will notice that, oh, well, that little section works really well together. So we'll just use that section. It's not uncommon for me to just separate all of my work or just cut the sections out that I like and keep this or throw away the sections that I don't. And so when I cut them, I was sort of paying attention to, you know, like the interest on the page and stuff. And this was the one that caught my interest the most. So I continued working on it. I probably worked on it for about 30 minutes after this. And then I probably will work on it probably 30 or 40 minutes. And the other reason that I cut them down to this smaller size is because this makes like a perfect size to like stick in your sketchbook and like work on sitting in front of the TV or something like that. So I hope you enjoyed this session and make sure you are following us at K-Space Arts and we are the Art in the Garden program. Thank you.